Today on Legally Us, we are breaking down Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's latest legal drama. Plus, can Pete Davidson sue Kanye West over his social media posts? And Olivia Wilde slams Jason Sudeikis for serving her custody papers at CinemaCon. We're breaking it all down in today's Legally Us. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Garibaldi and welcome to Legally Us, a brand new show here at Us Weekly where we break down all the latest legal drama with your favorite stars. Joining me each and every week, I am so excited to be joined by Nima Romani, a former federal prosecutor and president of West Coast Trial Lawyers. Nima, thank you so much for joining me and I'm so excited to break this all down with you each and every week. Christina, I'm so excited to be on for the show and looking forward to being on with you every single week. Yes, and I we want to get, j- dive right in. I want to get your expertise. Of course, everybody is talking about Kim and Kanye. Um, this week, every single week, um, Kim recently split with her boyfriend, as we know, Pete Davidson. And following the news, Kanye took to Instagram to post this mock New York Times cover with the headline, Skeet Davidson is dead at the age of 28. So right after this, Us Weekly confirmed that Pete is in trauma therapy in large part due to the violent posts that uh, Kanye has shared over the course of his relationship with Kim. So legally speaking, does he have any grounds to sue Kanye over these threatening posts? You know, Pete can sue. And really, there's a reason that Kanye took the post down. But really, Pete needs one of two things. He needs an actual threat of physical violence, serious bodily injury or death or a false or defamatory statement. You know, something that satire, you know, Skeet Davidson is dead, isn't going to be enough to be actionable either as a crime or under civil law. Interesting. I know a few months back he did, Kanye did have a music video. I don't know if you saw this, that um, Pete, or, or like somebody that looked like Pete was a cartoon figure and they did kill him. Would he have grounds in that respect or is that still like a gray area? It's a little more gray, but it's certainly a lot closer to the line, right? That's that bodily injury, that threat that you need, criminal threat. It can also be a civil clip. Why or why not do you think that he would sue, um, you know, in this case or not in the mock New York Times? Or why do, why do you think he hasn't sued before? Yeah, I mean, Pete's probably, you know, had enough. Kanye is on social media. He's running his mouth. And sometimes, again, we've seen celebrities. If you want, you know, an ex, if you want... Um, someone just to stop talking about you, the best way to do so is take legal action. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if Kanye will stop. We'll have to see. But in the meantime, he might be having to look for a different lawyer because his fifth divorce lawyer, Samantha Spector, decided to step down. Um, according to court documents obtained by Us Weekly, she previously asked the judge to relieve her as counsel. She did not give any details as to why, but she was granted that request. She submitted her first request back in May, saying that there has been an irreconcilable break down in the attorney-client relationship. The most recent documents, it also states that if Kanye fails to submit his financial declaration by September in order to to settle their remaining legal issues, the case will be headed to trial. So in your opinion, why can't Kanye keep an attorney? I mean, five lawyers in not that long of a period of time is a lot, right? Yeah, and the common denominator here is Kanye, right? Look, he has documented mental health issues and clearly based on what he's doing on social media, there's something going on. And importantly, the fact that Spectre had to file a motion, because normally, look, you fire your lawyer, the parties agree, you sign a document as the client saying, this is my old lawyer, this is my new lawyer, transfer your file, it's an orderly transition. But the fact that Spectre had to go to the judge and ask the judge, hey, relieve me as counsel, shows that not only is Kanye not working with his lawyer, he's not even firing her. So that's a problem. Oh, so so this is more like her stepping down. I need to get to re- remove myself from this situation, pretty much. Exactly. She wants out and either Kanye is not responding or hasn't consented, which is why we're here. That's why we're here. And I know that, you know, Kim, I think uh, a few months back said that Kanye was not responding to even her request. And that's why, you know, things dragged on for quite some time. So it seems like he's just kind of dragging his feet in this entire situation. Yeah, he's not filing the documents, the financial ones that he needs with the court. He's not cooperating with his attorney. That's probably why he's going to be on his sixth attorney. And normally, these divorce cases, they're so nasty. Even with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, they settled their divorce. You know, Brad and Angelina settled their divorce. I mean, they're filing lawsuits against each other. But these divorces typically don't go to trial. But Kanye is not your typical spouse. So we'll see if he stops cooperating the parties may have no choice but to have a judge rule on all this. Right. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, the 
that seems to be the case. I mean, what do you expect this outcome to be? Do you expect it to go to trial the way that things are going? Christina, if it was any rational celebrity, the case would have settled already, right? But Kanye is anything but. So when you're dealing with someone like that, that's not cooperating, not showing up, not doing what he needs to do, a judge may have to step in and rule on the Kim versus Kanye divorce. And would you take him on as a client? Absolutely not. The guy has every red flag in the book as a client. So, um, you know, the fact that he's found a new lawyer, Miss Hong, apparently, I got to ask, what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Um, well, what are you? I think a lot of people were wondering what Jason Sudeikis was thinking when Olivia Wilde was served those custody papers at CinemaCon back in April. Um, so a lot of stuff is kind of coming to light. New court documents were um, revealed. And Jason is saying that he regretted the decision. He said, I did not want a service to take place at the home of Olivia's current partner, talking about Harry Styles, because Otis and da Daisy, their children, might be present. He said, I did not want service to take place at the children's school because parents might be present. Now, according to court documents, they have been raising their kids both in Los Angeles and London. But Jason says that Olivia now wants to relocate the kids to London permanently at the end of 2023. Well, Olivia called out the outrageous legal tactics, saying that Jason's actions were clearly intended to threaten me and catch me off guard. He could have served me discreetly, but instead he chose to serve me in the most aggressive manner possible. The fact that he would embarrass me professionally and put our personal conflict on display is in this manner is extremely contrary to our children's best interests. These are fighting words. She is pissed. <laughs> well, and she should be. And Jason's yeah. talking out of both sides of his mouth. Mm -hmm. First, he said that, listen, I have nothing to do with the process server. You know, my lawyers hired them and they chose where to serve Olivia. Now he says, no, no, no. I actually told them don't serve Olivia at school. Don't serve Olivia at home. That's why they had to serve her at the convention. So which is it, Jason? Because you're telling two very inconsistent stories. Yeah, no, you make a really good point because I think when he when this first happened, he was like, oh, no, 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 the, I did not, didn't want this to happen. But I mean, you kind of expected it. I mean, I, I think it would have been better if she served him at the school in front of parents, not for the entire world to see or even at Harry Styles' house. <laughs> of course, this was a complete and total embarrassment to his ex. And normally what you do is everyone has lawyers. You ask the lawyer to accept service. So I'm sure Olivia's lawyer would have accepted service. There's no need to engage in, type, in these types of personal service using process servers when you already in, in a custody dis dispute, a family law case. So sometimes this is used to send a message or these types of tactics to gain leverage in litigation. Yeah, no, it definitely seems like, uh, I mean, then, you know, once they go to litigation, where does this kind of go from here? Who's kind of, you know, maybe a step ahead? I mean, are, are they going to be more in favor of Olivia or more in favor of Jason in relocating these kids to London? Yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, normally a judge is going to want to preserve the status quo. The kids are going to school here in L.A. where I am. So it's going to be tough to convince a family law judge that when the kids have been going to school here or back and forth between here and New York and London, that they're going to spend the entire school year and the vast majority of their time there in London. So uh, Jason has a point, but I don't think he did a good job handling the service issue. No, it doesn't seem like the co-parenting relationship is on the best of terms as of right now. Yeah. Do you see this going to trial or would this would something like this go to trial or would this be handled, um, you know, in, uh, you know, a, would a settlement be made, you know, without going into court? Again, the expectation usually is that these cases are going to settle, but this is not something that can be resolved. If Olivia is insistent on moving to London, taking the kids there, something's got to give, right? There's not going to be a joint or physical custody situation where the parties live thousands of miles away from each other. So if they can't come to a resolution, that's where a judge is going to step in and have to rule where the kids are going to live for the majority of the year. Yeah. And it, I mean, would, would Jason have to move to London or is this mostly on the parents to figure out, okay, we this is the central location for everybody to live in. It's more on the parents to make that decision. Correct. Yeah, if a judge rules that the kids are going to be in London and Jason wants to see them on a regular basis, you know, weekends and so forth, he's going to have to move to London or he's going to have to go there to see them because where the physical custody location is, that's where the kids are going to be the majority of the time. This is going to get very messy, I think. Very, very messy. Well, Nima, I really appreciate your expertise. This is, was absolutely wonderful. Definitely broke it all down. for. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Christina. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Definitely.